Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to work on getting this transaxle put back together. Now to begin with, we're going to install one of these solid axle boots. This is the kind that doesn't have a flange or a seam on it. And um, I prefer to put them on there when you have your axle tubes off. Good opportunity to go ahead and do that. Now the seam boots, if you're not disassembling your transaxle and you just need to put a boot on, there's nothing wrong with them. But they're just not as guaranteed uh, not to leak as a, a solid boot. Putting them on is a little bit fun. You gotta slide it up on that bell part and try to get your two screwdrivers pushed through around it without penetrating it or yourself. There I have just two long Harbor Freight screwdrivers. I keep them around just for this task. They're bent. They're really not good for anything else. So I don't recommend using an expensive screwdriver for this job. See, if I ever get them poked through there, we'll, we'll start going through the aggravation of trying to get that small end over that big bale. Now, before you get started, you got to take that boot and turn it inside out. Because if you don't, you put it on there and it'll be backwards. So you turn it inside out, and I smear or, uh, gear oil all around on the inside. Get it nice and slippery or else it's just going to get hung up and it'll probably rip on that big bell part, which does have a sharp edge on it. So we're going to use as much caution as we can. I say that because it takes a lot of pressure to get that thing to slide down on there. And you can see me struggle with it. Like I said, it's a little bit aggravating. Stay patient. It falls off, slides off, whatever. Just put it back. Keep going. <clears throat> It's almost like trying to put a small tire on a big wheel. That wouldn't work because tires aren't stretchy, but pretty much the same idea. I've almost worked this one on. There you go. See how fast it flew down from all that pressure. And now, you got to turn it back right side out, which you just invert it while it's on that tube. And when you get it to that point, there's still one part that's going to be inside out. It's the very smallest collar where your smaller hose clamp goes. <clears throat> I just use that 90 degrees, it's a larger pick, I'll call it, to get one part pulled out. I do as much as I can without it, but you usually got to use it again to finish it off. And there we go. She's on there. Now, have our axle boot on. Next step is to put this axle tube over the axle and made it back to the transmission side cover. When you're putting your axle tubes back on, remember that your shock mount points toward the front of your car, which is going to be towards the nose cone end of the transmission. <laughs> Now, you gotta pull that axle tube retainer 
whatever we want to call it, back over that boot. And then I'll go find all my fasteners and we'll slide it up on there and get it started back on that side cover. There's Mr. Buddy. I guess he's going to be the little Volkswagen dog. I'm sure he'd, he'd like to help if he could. There we go, about got all our fasteners on. Um, all those studs, it's just gonna be 14 foot pounds of torque. Now next we're going to put our little hose clamps onto our boots, hold them in place and seal everything off. Just open them all the way up so you can put them around that tube, put them back up there, join them back together. You have to kind of hold it up to get it uh, where it's even all the way around it. And there's the big one on. A little meticulous there and where I put it, it really don't matter. Found the little one, same principle. Take it all the way apart, put it back on there, get it back together. And we'll tighten it down. See me here in a second, I'll actually push in on the boot a little bit so it's not pulled out and stretching on it. When you tighten it down as it goes through the arc of travel. All right, now we have our wheel bearing uh, retaining cap. Or that's what I'm going to call it anyway. You have a seal in there, just knock it out from the front side. Get it out, and you're going to have a little stack of uh, like shim washers. You'll have a larger diameter and a smaller diameter. Set them to the side, kind of keep them placed together so you don't forget how they go. And always the fun part, scrape all the old gasket material off.
Make sure you get it good and clean. When I get done with this, I'm going to take some of that non-foaming engine cleaner. Spray all over it inside and out. And I just take a little nylon brush and scrub all over it. You know, get it pretty clean. Especially if it's not rusty. And one thing I'm going to show you on these is there's a weep hole. So if your seal, if fluid or gear oil leaks through your seal, it will go towards the end of the bearing cap and it will go into the weep hole and actually leak through the backing plate for your brakes. Grab me a little straight pick here. That's the exit hole. And the entry hole is in there in the front of the bearing cap. You want to clean it out, blow air through it, pipe cleaner, whatever you got. Here we are, we have a nice clean bearing cap. Hole's been evacuated of all the crud. See where it begins there in that passage. If my camera would ever just focus right. There she is. We're going to set it down and get ready to put our little washers and our seal in there. Now this is a just, I think it's just called a bearing spacer. But this is what it goes over against your bearing, in between your bearing and your brake drum. And this is what actually the seal surface rides on. You check it for scarring, pitting, rust, everything. You want to be a nice, smooth, and polished finish. Right there, where I was just showing you, is where the seal rides. There's your washers, the big one, then the smaller one, then your seal. We're going to work on getting it set in there. It takes a little while. Even though it looks like it's all rubber, it does have a metal collar in there that's encapsulated. It's a very tight press fit. Using the big end of a chisel until I can get it recessed down in there. And when I start getting it going in, we'll be uh, we'll put that spacer back in there and try to get our depth on our seal set right. That was real nice and clean, so I'm gonna put it back where it was. But I'll try to get y'all a viewpoint on what I'm referring to here. sure it's nice and even if it goes in there crooked it will make it will mess up the uh, metal collar give that seal structural damage and it won't work if it don't go right make sure it's nice straight and even going in there's our spacer that our seal is going to ride on push it in there and with that seal just flush in the housing it's not deep enough it's gonna ride on the very back side of that spacer where the uh, we just call it some nicked and just some rough looking area was all right here I've got the old seal I, I personally don't have a seal or bearing race driver that fits these good so you'll see me using some very primitive methods, trying to get that down in there right. Until that seal starts to get recessed, I can't really hit it with anything because you're always taking the chance that it's going to slip off and go through the rubber part.
a little meticulous takes a little bit of time to get it down in there I haven't really come up with the, what I feel like is a better idea to keep from possibly damaging the seal so I just take my time might want to apply a little bit of uh, prayer and fasting over, over this one You're going to need some patience. There, it's starting to go. I'll put that uh, spacer in there to try to help keep that old seal centered. Because it's finally got down in there far enough that both seal lips will fit on it. And I'll do some more hammer in there. We're about to break uh, past the point where it's going to be recessed and we'll be able to take care of it a little bit faster There we go, finally I've got it recessed far enough down into the hole that I can use a chisel. If you apply enough pressure keeping it pushed outwards, you won't go through that seal because you're hitting what looks like rubber, but it's actually a metal collar and it's pretty, pretty rigid. Go ahead and we'll take care of business right here. I decided that chisel was a little bit too wide, so I'm going to swap over to a more narrow one. It'll apply pressure better to where I'm trying to push it. And we're getting pretty close here, making sure it's nice and straight, even, equally recessed all the way across it. Feels good, looks good. Put the uh, spacer back in there. See where the seal lip is riding on it. That's about where we wanted it. Now, we're gonna put the wheel bearing back on there. And this is a spacer that goes in between the bearing and the axle, beveled in towards the axle. The bearing on there is a nice easy fit, just push it on. Get it pushed in that axle housing or axle tube housing. It's your brake backing plate. And there's the other part of that weep hole we were talking about on that bearing cap. So you got bearing goes in the housing, then your backing plate. They're going to have a paper seal or a gasket. They actually made out gasket material on the more modern axle seal kits. You know, a ring that fits around that bearing housing, the whole outer perimeter of that uh, bearing retainer cap has a beveled end in it, and it slides up against that uh, O-ring. There I'm putting my bearing cap on, and I have the spacer in the seal already. I'm pushing it on, 
in that picture there's an o-ring that goes between the spacer and to the bevel part between the spacer and the bearing otherwise you put your four bolts back in And you will tighten those down to 43 foot-pounds of torque to get them set right. And the next step would be to put the brake drum on, tighten down the axle nut. And if I'm not mistaken, that goes on at 270 foot-pounds of torque. I believe I mentioned previously that I'm not sure if I'm going to use drum brakes or disc brakes. And my hold up here is trying to find somebody that has the machine that will fit in the spline part of that brake drum to see if they can be resurfaced or not. If not, well, a new pair of brake drums is about $400. The disc brake kit's only $100 more. And it comes with everything new, so... That's the deciding factor right now, and that's what I'm waiting on to try to figure out. Here's our transmission, part one and two. There's that solid axle boot. You seals, our rings, and gasket there on the axle bearing side. And I use CB Performance rhino series transmission mounts they're definitely better than stock and they're a far step up from those red polyurethane ones you'll find so over the years i figured out that i personally just don't want to use any of the polyurethane products offered for one of these there's the front rhino mount they're a very good product for the money and i'll show you in a minute if you do use these and i missed the little drop down option to include new bolts but those mounts on this end require four new bolts that are longer than the factory ones to hold the mount to the transmission cradle it wasn't really a big deal i was able to source some at uh advanced auto parts i'll show the package here soon they're just a dormant product very inexpensive. So if you forget like I did, it's not the end of the world. Not the part right there that is thicker. It's a flange bolt. 8 by 1.25 millimeter thread pitch. 25 millimeters long. There's the part number, it's just Dorman 980-425D. There's a the specification, it comes with four and that's exactly how many you need. They're less than five dollars. I like that they're flanged so this end doesn't have to use the washer. It's already built onto the bolt. Other than that, um, I'll be figuring out what we're gonna do on this car next. I'll finish up that side getting the seals and all done. This is how I attack the transmission part on my cars and otherwise I'm just gonna see you guys later. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something. You take care now.